So the announcement went up just a couple of minutes ago. It looks like Super 7 has finally revealed their complete Ultimates line of Wave 2. The Transformers Ultimate line was something that Super 7 started at the beginning of the year. It looks pretty hype. There's a heavy lean on Action Masters and that kind of lore, but also putting in a whole bunch of accessories to celebrate all the different iterations of Transformers history, and it's a lot of deep cuts. And that's what this segment's really going to be about today, is going through Wave 2 of the Transformers Ultimate line from Super 7 and all the deep cuts that these four figures that were revealed to us are going to have. Now, we knew these were coming because they gave us the listing of all the figures for Wave 2 and Wave 3, but we didn't know the stuff that was going to come with it. And most we knew is Grimlock was going to get a fish. <laughs> that's all we knew. I'll go into that in a moment. So we have here the full information, all the images, the pre-orders, the prices, everything that's going on. I'll get into that at the end of it. So let's get into first Generation 1 Megatron, or as they call it, Transformers Ultimate Wave 2 Megatron G1 Cartoon. So, of course, it's G1 Megatron, not much to be known of the actual design itself, super articulated 7-inch Megatron figure. But let's talk about the accessories that it comes with. So it comes with a regular head. It comes with a power-hungry head, and it's a Megatron head with some Energon dripping from two sides of his lips. Uh, some people are misinterpreting this as the beat-up Megatron from Transformers the movie after Optimus Prime beat him up, but it's actually from the epi episode Microbots uh, from Season 2, Generation 1, where he's drinking a uh, an Energon cube directly from an Energon cube, and he gets it on his face. Uh, that's actually an extra accessory that's included here. We'll get into that in a moment. And the last head here is the head with the mind control helmet. And this one comes from the episode of Prime Problem, again, also season two. It was the mind control head he was using to control his clone of Optimus Prime in the episode of the Prime Problem. He also comes with six, cha six uh, interchangeable hands. He comes with a hand holding the Energon Cube. Again, this is the Energon Cube from the episode Microbots, where he's drinking out of it, so you use that power-hungry head with it. It comes with the antimatter anti -matter swap out chest. So this is from the episode Roll For It, where he put a whole bunch of Energon Cubes in his chest, and he has this antimatter chest, um, which is this the antimatter formula that he got from the professor in that episode. Uh, then we have the Kremzeek accessory, the little Kremzeek figure, which is again from the season two episode of Kremzeek. Not much to really explain there. There's been quite a few Kremzeek figures throughout the years, and oddly enough, a lot of them included with either Megatrons or Kissplay figures. <laughs> uh, we have the Chemical Flask. This one's a bit of a deep cut, this one. It's the Chemical Flask that he threw in that one flashback scene in season three of Return of Optimus Prime Part One. There's a flashback scene where the character of Gregory talks talks about how he got his scar on his face and the origin of that and his hatred for the Transformers. And it shows a flashback scene from, I guess, at some point in season two or season one, where the Auto Optimus Prime and Megatron are in his, his laboratory and Megatron throws a flask, the flask explodes and it damages Gregory and gives him the scar that he has today. So that's a real deep cut, that one. The origin of Gregory flask. Sure thing. Why not? Hey, we got to thank Gregory. He uh, saved Optimus Prime's hide from... I guess, falling into that exploding sun. However, they changed the, the the canon of Optimus Prime and Return of Optimus Prime to Dark Awakening. He also comes with a laser sword. That's from more to me, uh, from uh, Transformers the movie, excuse me. Uh, he uses it on Optimus. It's the, the lightsaber blade, pretty much. And same thing, the, the accessory after that is the blaster that he found on the ground that he uses to shoot at Optimus in Transformers the movie. So two little Transformers the movie nods there. Uh, again, that's where people thought that the damaged, uh, power-hungry face is supposed to be with the blaster because it's it's over prime. But it's uh, yeah, I guess you could interpret it that way. We also have the pearl of Buhudin, and the pearl of Buhudin is from the season two episode of the Trans Euro Express, which is that big Autobot race episode. And it was a device used by Megatron to control the weather, and it's kind of a weird-looking. Cybertronian looking device thing. So there's that. And it comes with two Energon maces, one straight and one kind of ready to flail around. So nice, cool accessories there. Cool, cool little amount of deep cuts. Really awesome. Pretty cool. It's Megatron. What could be said? The next one here is the one that has me super excited. And it's that of the Pretender Shell Bludgeon. 
and the care that they went into the extra accessories included with this is pretty cool. So first it comes with a toy inspired head. So it has with the head sculpt, the, the skull that's based off of the toy design, which is the more black sunken eyes of the toy skull. Then it has a comic inspired head. And this head is obviously based off of the Marvel Comics version where it had the red in it for his reactions and it has an open mouth. So it's, it's, it looks spectacular. What they don't list here on the list, but you could see in the images is also you have two different choices of helmets and the two different choices of helmets. One of them is more toy accurate. One of them is more again, comic book accurate. I assume you could probably swap them between the two skull heads because they look like they're separable from the skulls, but I do not know, but it looks like that too. So it's there. Check it out. Pretty cool. Again, also six interchangeable hands. Really awesome with that. Has a pointing finger too. Uh, it has here the head wire bundle, which is, as they list here, comic expired, inspired. What this is, is in Generation 2, spoiler for people, uh, in Generation 2, G2 Megatron ripped off Bludgeon's head and holds it a la, you know, Hamlet. And so you could take the Bludgeon head, you could attach this little hanging wire accessory ball joint at the bottom of the head and then you could put it in g2 megatron's hand g2 megatron is going to be in the next wave so i'm pretty sure that's how they're going to sell it there he also comes with two different kinds of swords with two different kinds of sheaths so of course you got the katana and then you got the wakazashi both with their matching seat sheaths i'm pretty sure you could put them stored on the side there and of course, the cool stuff here, harkening back to the toy, you have the to you have the tank blaster. The tank blaster is the actual turret part of the tank top that is obviously going to come off, and it was an extra weapon that came with the small robot. You have the ion blaster, which is the white gun that he had with the original toy. Didn't really use it in the comic books. It was just primarily a toy thing for for uh, Bludgeon. And then you have the turret shield, which is the top of the tank again of his actual robot mode kind of thing and it makes a shield for the side of him i really dig it a lot he looks really cool really a strong attempt to make it look like his comic book model sign me up that's really awesome next we have grimlock yeah we got grimlock let's talk about all the stuff here not not too many surprises here i remember when i talked about the fish and the fish segment just a couple days ago i kind of predicted what some of the accessories were going to be and lo and behold they are there so what do we got? We got six interchangeable hands. It's mostly just hands for how he's going to hold all of his accessories and stuff because this is Grimlock in dino mode. It's the choice I would have made. I wouldn't have gone with robot mode. We have the mind transfer helmet, which is from the episode, the Grim Grimlock's new brain, where how he created the Technobots. Again, season three episode to check it out. Really cute episode. I love that one. Uh, he has the soft goods apron, the serving tray, and the six different drinkware. That all comes from the third season three episode, Madman Paradise. So, you know, again, that was available with the masterpiece. So they're just bringing it back here, and no surprise it's going to be included. Here's an interesting one. The King's Crown. Now, the reason why I say it's bizarre is because Grimlock in the Generation 1 versions... When he does have the King's Crown, it's always been depicted something that he wore in robot mode. In the Marvel Comics, he wore it in robot mode. And it wasn't until, like, they gave the King's Crown with the G2, the G2 colored version of the Japanese version of Masterpiece. And then, of course, we'd get the crown with some American releases of the Masterpiece. Did the promotional image and stuff also show, hey, you could put it in robot mode, the crown, or you could put it on him in dino mode. And that was really the first time we saw the crown put on the dino mode of Grimlock. Now, of course, people could argue, well, if you watch the Cyberverse show, uh, you know, Grimlock wears the crown in both modes too. He wears it in the dino mode, but that's the Cyberverse show. So I'm really talking specifically um, to the G1 version here. And of course, even like the Grimlock Cyberverse Deluxe toy has the crown accessory for the alt mode too, for the dino mode. So just, I just wanted to just point that out. Very bizarre that they, they included that, but I guess they really were kind of short on accessories and they figured, ah, just include the crown. Maybe, maybe they'll make a Grimlock robot mode one day. And the only way you could get the crown is through this version. Who knows? <laughs> they'll, they'll pull something like that. And last but not least, you have, of course, a wheelie figure riding on his back. I'm surprised the wheelie figure doesn't have a, a little slingshot, but I guess they just wanted to keep it simple, you know, wheelie fine friend today so and again from that it's from transformers the movie if you haven't realized and last but not least we have generation one tracks again this goes with the action master idea which i really dig 
uh, because there's two Action Master deep cuts there. First, we'll go into the interchangeable heads. We have the regular Generation 1 head and the evil alien robot head from Hoist Goes to Hollywood. Uh, that's a Season 2 episode. Again, he had the little alien head for when the Autobots had to be in. I think it was the episode. With, I think the, the movie they were recording was uh, Attack from the Aliens of Outer Space or something like that. So they wore those those masks to look like aliens, even though they're technically aliens themselves. Again, six interchangeable hands. No surprises there. You get a tank, vintage-inspired toy. What that is is it's his, actually a his Action Master partner from his Action Master version called Basher. But what's cool about this one is Basher, because he was an Action Master with those limited paint decos, because Action Master partners were usually one or two gang-molded colors kind of put together, like one primary color and then one black color usually. And uh, in the case of Basher, his Action Master partner, he had like a green and kind of stuff. It just didn't look nice. So this one, they did a more uh, Trax colored Action Master Basher partner. And it uh, looks really good. I dig it. I, I like that they included that as a little extra, you know, kind of harkens back to his Action Master, you know, UK background. And because that, you know, these are non-transformable figures, it even gives an extra little bit of Action Master to that. I dig it. I dig it a lot. The Ion Blaster, they list here as a vintage-inspired toy. Again, this it says vintage-inspired toy, but the gun is not based off of his Generation 1 toy gun. It's based off of his Action Master's gun. So not only do you have his Action Master partner, but the gun that's included with Trax is his Action Master-styled gun. Really cool stuff. Dig it. Nice touch. And then the other Ion Blaster is the cartoon-inspired one. Again, make tracks, all the episodes where he has his gun. It's based off of that one. It's the tiny gun there. Uh, it's, it's dead on that. And last but not least, least, you have G1 Blaster in boombox mode for tracks to have with him. That comes from the episode Autobop Season 2. And, you know, those two have a, a link together from that episode and stuff, so really dig it. Now let's talk about prices. This is all cool stuff. I'm very excited about it. Um, they're $55 each. Uh, you get a lot of cool stuff in them. They're seven inches tall. How it works essentially is the pre-orders are going to be available until August 29th. After that, when they're gone, they're gone. You can't pre-order them anymore. You're going to have to rely on the secondary market. The expected delivery date is sometime in the summer of 2022. So just keep that in mind also. There's a little bit of a wait time. Now, if you are someone from outside the United States, they actually have other international partners for ordering. So I heavily suggest you go to Super 7's website, go to their partner section for their international orders of any of these pre-orders, and they'll have partners that can make the shipping and, of course, the duty a lot more easier on you because, I mean, if you're buying the full set of these, you're talking over $200. If you're buying from an American a company like Super 7 and you're not in the States, you might get hit with duty or the shipping just might be brutal. So they have partner options. Next thing to also mention is if you are interested in getting all of them, uh, again, this is going to be over 200 bucks. They actually also involve payment plans. So you could pay in small payments so you don't feel all the load in one shot for this. So that's also an option that's on top of the partner system and for even American buyers. Um, just check that out too. They give that option also. So check that out. Really cool stuff. I'm excited about these. They look fantastic. And now, man, now I'm really curious. I'm really curious how they're going to do the part three of stuff. Because when you really think about it, like, you know, you have the, the bludgeon. The bludgeon is going to come with that little wire hanging from his head accessory. And if that's the case, then now we know that he, they're going to be making a G2 Megatron in C, if for, the, for the third wave. So if the G2 Megatron is going to be in the third wave, then it's going to be compatible with this bludgeon. So it looks like you're going to have to make two purchases. I know I will. Now, the others that are mentioned that are also going to be, I guess they're going to reveal them in fall, that's the plan, is you're going to have an IDW Tarn, which is going to be pretty interesting with different face sculpts and stuff, because it's all about Tarn with his mask. You're going to have a Generation 1 Alligator Con, so some kind of Optimus Prime Alligator, we'll see how they tackle that one, and a G1 Rekar. That's going to probably have a whole bunch of different face sculpts that are going to be in between the bunch, and of course, they talk TV, you can probably have a TV you could pull out of his chest. It's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. I think I've talked enough about these. Let me know what you think. Who do you want to see afterwards if there's a wave four? Uh, I want to see more Action Masters and Pretenders. That's what I want to see. I want to see 
comic accurate Nightbeat, you know, with his weird design because of, you know, the, the story behind Nightbeat and why he has a very different comic design compared to his toy was a whole bunch of mistakes in the design process and what was uh, included with the toy. E anyhow, let me know what you think. This is hype stuff. Super 7 does incredible stuff. I know I'm going to be all over this.